Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Hypermind Vanilla Season 3. Here we are at Spawn. You can see we're at the boat dock and the temporary iron farm output. And we're going to do something about that today. We're going to work on the real iron farm output area. We're going to work on our storeroom. So let's get started. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, here we are at the temporary output, right? So this is where I have been putting or sending all of the iron and poppies from the iron golems. And, the, you know, it still bothers me that we're getting so many poppies. I really should probably go check on that down in the deep basement. But for now... We're going to come in here and take a look at some of the work that I've been doing off camera to get ready for today. So the first things first, uh, when we put in this wall, I originally had this stone brick flush with this, this wall right here, or this set of logs. And I didn't like that too much. I separated that out. So I pushed that back and that brings a little bit more detail here because we're sharing that corner with over here and that's actually a change from before as well we'll come back to that but over here we've got this corner showing up over here yep and then we've got some stairs so we're going to probably continue a similar design down this way until we get to the door mechanism that uh, we're going to see if we can get Cass helping out with that who knows we'll see he's he's known to do some doors and there's one there's a four by four that works really well, or that would work really well in here. So we'll see about getting some help with that. But over here in the bulk iron ingot storage, what I've done is I've pushed this in a little bit, lost a couple of rows of chests, but that's fine. That's perfectly fine. And so we've pushed this in so we have a little bit more design here and it's not as boring. So a little bit more texture. So I think, I think that's good. And behind the scenes, you can see that we've got some of the hoppers going in. We're going to be working on that today. Down here, we've changed up how this is going to go. This is going to be our iron block store or crafting area. And all of these chests are going to eventually filter back in to this storage chest right here. You can see even behind here, we've got some item hoppers. So uh, let's see, anything else in here? No, I think we're pretty well done. We need to work on a better lighting setup for the top of those logs, but we'll figure that out at some point in the future, not in this episode. So uh, the next order of business has been to clear out an area that I can start doing some of the redstone required for this. I've also taken out the netherrack and we're starting the courtyard. So this is going to be a player courtyard. It's going to be kind of an entrance to the visitor's area for the castle and then ultimately with pathways leading down to the iron farm storage area and maybe some of the farms as well but i guess the storage area is going to include all those or the output from all those farms but if we come up here up to my standard supply area you can see we've got a stone brick uh, mess up here and what is going on what in the world that's right i have cleared out an area all the way around the iron farm four blocks all the way around that storage area and that's going to give us just enough space to fit some silos in for all of those storage areas but also the sorting mechanism that we're going to be putting in uh, i'm currently on with run wild but i'm going to take care of converting this to daytime did i do it slept until sunrise it hasn't quite done that Hmm, I might be having some lag issues. Is that going to do it? Okay, whatever. Okay, having some lag. We had some issues earlier where in the server crashed while I was playing on it, and it killed my player inventory file. So there's something going on. Something's not quite right. Uh, but Tio was able to get that back. But anyway, so I've I've dug out all this area and in doing so I needed to move the uh, 
where our items are flowing from. So I've actually carried the entire item elevator to the top here. You can see some iron coming down this way and it's still going back to our standard output right now. And eventually we will redirect this into a massive sorting array that's going to start over here with the iron ingots and then work its way all the way around the farm, eventually getting to our junk chest right in there. But that's going to be for the rest of this episode. For now, what I am going to do is get some materials ready and we're going to work on a little bit of one of those silos down below. I'll show you how that's going to come together and then uh, I'll have to take care of the rest of that at a later point. But anyway, let me get some materials together and then we'll work out that silo. And we're back and I have a decent amount of supplies here. We've got a bunch of chests, a bunch of trap chests, had some of those, not too many, but I like to make those as I need them rather than make a bunch ahead of time. Oh, we got a server restart in five minutes. Let's see if we can get this explained real quick. So over here, we're going to have the bulk storage for the iron ingots and then a little crafting area. But in the rest of these things around the fringes, we're going to have silos kind of hidden behind the walls. So let's see if we can put one of those together, at least get the idea real quick for you. And I've got the chiseled stone brick there and polished andesite there. So what I've done right here is I've put hoppers into the backs of those, uh, what are they, the main storage chests. And what we can do is get our hot bar arranged a little bit. Hopefully I don't need the ax, but let's just come back and kind of build this out. So what we're going to do is put that there and then we're going to go off to the sides like so and like so and we'll come up here and just uh, straddle this uh, prismarine block here and then what we can also do is maybe come back off of that and put say one of those how about that uh you know actually we don't need we don't need a trapped chest there I'm going to get rid of that hopper first and sure enough we needed the axe but let's do this all right so we just need a regular chest at that point we will have to alternate to get our, our to make sure that we don't have any conflicts here but what we'll do is hopper there hopper there and there we'll come in with regular chests here and then this is where we have to bring in the trap chest so what we'll do is take this up um well let's just get a feel for where this is going to come so our main item stream is going to be coming from right there and then all of the crafting area what we're going to do is run all of the farm outputs into that one item elevator so that's going to be where our sorting goes through that's pretty high up so we can actually run a decent height on to this thing so what I'm going to do I'm going to take care of most of that off camera you can see that this is not going to be enough material to handle all of that all the way around we've got 10 or yeah 10 10 of these silos to do so I've got a decent amount of off camera work to take care of but let's just get this one done and then we'll come back we've got some redstone to do as well so we might not get this part all the way done just for materials collection but we do need to get to the redstone so anyway I'm gonna finish this silo all the way up this side and then I'll bring, come back and we'll get started on some sorting all right once again it is time for a progress update I figured I'd bring you in standard right through that tunnel just so we can get that same whoa as we look up at the ceiling done a lot of work off camera a lot of prep for future bits and bobs that we're going to be doing and we'll take care of those in due time real quick but let me just show you kind of what we've been doing back here I've carried the silo up not all the way because we really don't need that much storage and we have to have enough space for a few other mechanics that I want to take care of but um, I will show you those in just a moment so some of the things that I've done off camera are preparing for the iron block storage or crafting area 
So down here, what you'll be able to do is just bring an axe and knock out one of these chests and then just bulk craft iron blocks, throw them into this trap chest, and then we'll have some hopper dropper comparator clocks going that'll shoot them the iron blocks into a water stream that'll carry down through here to this imposing tunnel that goes all the way down to where the iron gets shot out of the collection area down below. So that's going to take it all the way into our standard item elevator. So that's the way we can recycle items through the system. So this is going to be the pathway for that. We're not going to get to that this episode. We've got way too much to do and not enough time in this episode. So the other mechanics that I wanted to get to real quick are something up here let's just go up you can see some of what I have been doing here so what I've been doing is laying out a pathway where we're going to have overflow going so the silos come up to here and it's something like 30 chests total 30 chests of storage for each item that's more than enough but if we ever do happen to get overflow I don't want these items, these automatic items, coming in and ruining our junk area because there might be actually good stuff coming coming into the junk area. Say somebody falls into the end portal or, or loses their stuff right there at the end portal, that's going to come through into the system as well. And we want to make sure that all of that doesn't flow into the trash. So any of these extra things, instead of having them flow into the junk chest, we're going to have them shoot out into a water stream that's going to take them around to uh, a pit of lava or cactus or something but we're going to be using these droppers to take care of that and before I get into the redstone for that I figured I would show you kind of what um you know some of my thought process behind it so let's drop down to here and uh, usually with the droppers you've seen me do these clocks before what I'm going to do is put a piece of uh, just something in there and usually with these what you want to do is bring a comparator off the back and that's going to read a signal from your dropper and then you've seen me put these together before on a number of farms uh, i don't think i've done any on season three yet uh, have we hmm down you know what down down in the collection area down below i've done one of these so what we want to do is make sure that we don't end up with a situation where we get a clogged dropper and you can do that if you get completely full if you do the standard comparator clock like you see most people do and that's um, like so put that on subtract mode and then how you know what I don't even know I can't I can't do the standard one anymore I've been doing this other one for so long but the standard one that you see has the possibility of getting a clogged up dropper and we don't want that. We want these things to run all the time. So we're going to increase the signal strength using a repeater. And we're going to go into another comparator. Put this one in subtract mode. That one doesn't need to be in subtract mode. And then what we're going to do is just make this a loop. Okay. And then what we come in with later is a block that we don't really care about. And a repeater into that. And then another piece of redstone dust. And that is going to shoot the item out of the dropper okay so that's all well and good this thing works really well it's very fast it's a bit noisy but you know what it, you know it doesn't really matter but the problem here is that it juts out three four blocks from the dropper i don't like that and the reason why is we don't have tons of space available in our current setup so let's see if we can not break the floor apart let's put this back it's not time for the floor we'll get to that once we get all of the infrastructure in place so let's come over here we'll climb back up and see if we can't work something out hopefully hopefully I can do this on camera all right so we don't have tons of space available uh, not so much here but on the other side we don't have much uh, in the way of the rest of the island available so if we jut out too far then we're going to be uh, building a rather large wall and which we've got to do anyway but 
we want to minimize how much we have to dig out. We want to still have this castle wall look like it's coming out of the island. So we're going to have to kind of work with that. So I'm going to come over to uh, maybe this one. So we've got this dropper facing down and we'll have a water stream over packed ice here. I've been to the packed ice biome to grab some more of that. So we're going to take a signal out just like you saw me do inside the testing area there. But for now, what we're going to do is kind of change things up a bit. We're going to run that into a block right there. And let's just put a test item that we don't really care about. We've got plenty of redstone coming in from the witch farm down or over elsewhere on Hypermine. And so, you know, we're actually not going to need repeaters on this. You'll you'll be uh, you'll be surprised by this. What we're going to do now maybe not put that in quite yet because this is going to push me off and we'll grab a sticky piston okay and what that's going to do is whenever there is an item in this dropper it's going to extend the sticky piston okay it's all well and good not too nothing too fancy at the moment right okay so we don't need any more sticky pistons we're going to take a piece of sticky or slime block here and not a block of redstone but instead a piece of nether brick and we're going to put that there okay so far nothing nothing too odd right you know nothing nothing too crazy and then what we're going to do is come down from here just a couple and then we're going to come over uh, with nether brick slab kind of nether brick is kind of hard to come by because well uh, you have to smelt up nether rack, and we've got plenty of that around which just you have to go on collecting missions. So we're going to put a redstone torch here, and when the piston extends, this nether brick block is going to be over this uh, redstone torch, and that is going to give us a redstone signal on this. It's going to power this block with a strong power uh, I'm not sure if that necessarily makes sense if you're not into redstone that may not make sense but then what we're gonna do is come over like so and then we'll put some another brick like that and then we'll come around jumpity jump 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 okay and we'll see if we can slot this in real quick then what we do is take our comparator put that on subtract mode and then we'll come back around and do our little loop okay like we've seen before actually I need I need that okay loop of redstone okay so far nothing is in there but let's put let's put a dot right there so you see the piston extends and now this comparator can read the signal coming from the redstone torch and we've got our loop and then what we'll do is put a nether brick block there and then bring back in some redstone. And there we go. We have gotten our, our loop. So instead of taking up an extra four out, out from this block, we're taking two. Okay, so that kind of squeezes in the circuit a little bit. So what I'm going to do is we've got uh, what eight over here eight on that far wall and then two over there so 18 total something like that so let me take care of all of those I'll bring you back once we're done and we'll see where to go from there well what you see me doing here is putting in some obsidian because obsidian cannot be moved by slime blocks it's a consideration we have to have for this particular design and what's gonna happen is the uh, what do we call it the packed ice is gonna be on on this level right here which means the water is going to be on top of that packed ice so we do have to close all of that up so wherever there is a slime block we have to make sure that we uh, don't let it mess up our water flow so uh, we will be putting obsidian there and that's not going to move our walls so i'm on the opposite side of where we were last together you can see how how this thing kind of already juts out you see that yeah so we don't have much more in the way of a believable island or believable 
natural structure. So um, we're, we're cutting it very close. So we'll be putting the wall that does ultimately go in, we'll be putting it on uh, right on this side. So, so yeah, that's kind of the plan now. And we'll have a little bit of the island left over right there, but not much. Anyway, I've got a little bit more here to do, not with obsidian, but at least with some nether brick. We need to extend this all the way out and drag out some of the packed ice. And we'll get those water streams going. And then our disposal system should be good to go. So let me get all that done. Well, now you can see that water is flowing through this channel and that should mean that we've got everything done here as far as the uh, extra stuff goes, as far as the junk overflow goes. So what we're going to do is a system test. Okay, so I'm just going to chuck, hmm, which one, which one's not going to take but so long. We'll put, uh, let's see, we'll put 12 packed ice into there. Okay, and then what we'll do is come around here and see if we pick up 12 packed ice. All right, so I'm just gonna wait for it to go all the way around. And while we're doing that, let me just address a couple of potential questions that you might have. You may be wondering, what in the world is this texture right here? This is the nether brick texture that is from the B00 texture pack. And did we get 12? We got 12. Awesome. That did not take too long. So there we go. So once we do get overflow, we should be getting rid of those items fairly quickly. So this is the nether brick texture from the B00 texture pack. If we were to switch out the resource pack, rather, uh, if we were to switch that out, we'd get that standard dark purple color. But he changed it so that it's got this black texture. Um, I, I like it in in terms of the, the fact that we needed some sort of other black block in the game but overall I don't I don't like it from the standpoint that it doesn't look the same for everybody else on the server so this is not a decorative block by any stretch of the imagination I use this block uh, nether brick in particular because it's a good signal that hey you're about to dig through something important I don't tend to build with it because I don't like the color and not just here in the BW texture pack, but in uh, standard vanilla resources as well. I don't like it, um, so I don't tend to build with it. It also has the property that it is not affected by haste too. So when we do go over to where our beacon area is, if we happen to be digging out anywhere around this area, we're not going to accidentally dig up any of the redstone. So I put redstone on top of nether brick for that very reason. and all of this stuff kind of gets hidden. So I do tend to use it. And so so for redstone projects, I do have to go gather a bunch of nether rack or go tear out some nether fortress. But anyway, we've uh, we found a few sources of nether rack. And so I was able to do this entire thing in nether brick. So there we go. And just in case you were wondering about those two things. So Anyway, that's going to be it for this episode. I know we didn't get the entire storage area done, but again, this is a rather large project. We still have sorting to go. We still have we still have to reroute the item stream from there. We've got our bulk uh, bulk item creation, our crafting area to do, and and then also what do we got here? This is going to be the trash can. So this is going to be going the same place all those overflow chests are going. So we still got a decent amount to do before we can say, hey, the storage area is ready to use. Now we'll we'll open it before we get the floor in, but uh, we we aren't we aren't ready yet. So we still got a decent amount to do. But I think we've made a pretty good stab at it with the silos behind each of those uh, extra storage areas and the overflow. So we've got that in place so we can start turning on some of these farms. So I'm, I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm, no, I don't, I don't think we've done too badly. So anyway, let me know what you think. I'd love to hear your comments down in the comment section down below, or you can catch me on Twitter at MC Soap the Great. But as for me, this has been Soap the Great, and hopefully you've enjoyed. If you did, a like is always appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, make sure to subscribe so you're up to date with everything going on on the channel. But we are going to call it for today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.
Bye-bye.